this I lingered mid doubt and despair, since bondage long held me a captive to care. But Jesus delivered my soul from its chains. His precious blood cleansed me from sin's guilty stains. The world and its pleasures did tempt me to stray. I saw not the danger that lurked on the way. The toils closed around me. I knew no release, but Jesus has found me and given me his peace. Get right with God, his pardon is free. Get right with God, he's waiting for thee. Our Jesus is calling. Yes, hello, hello. Um, you will be listening to a presentation on jewelry. Um, just to know that uh, this presentation is not to condemn. If you're watching this for the first time, this is for educational purposes only. And you're encouraged to search the scriptures for yourself uh, to see the things that were mentioned are so. Also, uh, off recording, we were sharing our personal testimonies of how we felt convicted to remove of these things. I, for one, was someone who wore a lot of jewelry. And um, when I gave my heart to Jesus years ago, many years ago, 20 years ago, precisely, that I saw there was a higher purpose and I learned that um, my treasures are to be stored and focus for heaven and not on the things of this earth as this earth will soon perish with all the destruction that's coming upon it um, and so in with this mindset Jesus he himself he said he didn't come to condemn but to save so may this be a presentation that would simply edify and not condemn stay tuned for the presentation and God bless Share my screen. Welcome, everyone. Um, today's topic is on jewelry. But before we begin, I'll just start with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your loving kindness and tender As mercies times. as we come together uh, for listening to the Spirit on this Sabbath day. And for this, um, uh, help us keep our eyes fixed on you as well. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, I'm just going to give me a second. Can you see my screen? Here, okay, that's my PowerPoint. Sorry, I'm using my cell phone, so I do apologize. Okay. All right. Precious Jewels, presentation. Is Julie good or bad? So can somebody read Psalm 77 verse 13? I think the verse says, um, that I wait, O God, is in the sanctuary. Um, who is so great a God is our God? I believe that's Psalm 77, 13. And somebody read Hi Haggai 2, verse 4 to 9. Can you read my Bible with my bag? Bible my bag? Yeah, my Bible. Where is it? In my bag. <laughs> in the kitchen. Yeah, sorry. And somebody read Haggai 2, verse 4 to 9, please. Haggai chapter Haggai 2. 2. Okay, go ahead. No, I'm eating. Go ahead. <laughs> Haggai chapter 2, verses 4 to 9. Yet now be strong, O Zerubbabel, saith the Lord, and be strong, O Joshua, son of Josedek, the high priest, and be strong, all ye people of the land, saith the Lord, and work, for I am with you, saith the Lord of hosts. According to the word that I covenanted with you when ye came out of Egypt, so my spirit remaineth among you. Fear ye not. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, yet once it is a little while, and I will shake the heavens and the earth and the sea and the dry land. And I will shake all nations, and the desire of all nations shall come. 
and I will fill this house with glory, saith the Lord of hosts. The silver is mine, and the gold is mine, saith the Lord of hosts. Verse 9, the glory of this latter house shall be greater than of the former, saith the Lord of hosts. And in this place will I give peace, saith the Lord of hosts. Amen. Thank you. So, as you can see, we're saying the foundation uh, that um, his ways in the sanctuary, and this is setting precedence of what I'm about to share in the next uh, slide. So we see in the purpose of ornaments, principle number one, the purpose of ornaments was for the offering of the tabernacle. And uh, we look in Exodus 15, uh, sorry, 25, verse 1 to 7. You don't have to go there, but I encourage you to read that on your spare time. But if you pay attention to verse 2, everyone who gives willingly with his heart, okay, if you look, if your Bible is actually there, you can actually turn it if you want. But if you go to verse 2 specifically, uh, it's, it's outlined, uh, he, everyone who gives willingly with their, his heart. Now then God gives a list of these offerings outlined from verse 3 to 7. And then in verse 8, God commands to make them a sanctuary that he may dwell among them. Okay? Verse 9. So for what purpose? According to all that God showed Moses after the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of all the instruments thereof. Now, from Exodus 25, verse 10, to Exodus 27, verse 21, uh, you can read that on your spare time. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, you can read that on your spare time. It's, we, as we know, it talks about all the articles of the sanctuary and that were made of ornaments. And then in Exodus 28, that's when God instructed the priest to wear garments adorned after the pattern of the sanctuary. So everything is uniformed. Okay. Uh, Exodus 28, verse 3, God was specific when he stated those who are wise-hearted, whom are filled with the spirit of wisdom, to make these garments outlined in verse 4 to 43. Now, according to Proverbs 9, verse 10, and Proverbs 1, verse 7, uh, we know the definition of wisdom. Okay? Does anybody can guess what that verse says? If anybody better remembers what that verse actually says. The Lord in is of wisdom. Exactly. Amen. The purpose in verse 2 was for the glory and beauty, and in verse 3, for consecration. Now, principle number 2. The purpose of wearing ornaments during the time was to glorify God in holiness and in beauty. We find that in Exodus 8, 28, verse 2, which represents him. Now, in Hebrews 9, verse 1 to 10, uh, it talks about the old covenant sanctuary. And in, the, on, in verse 11, Christ was who is our high priest, came to establish by a greater and more perfect tabernacle. And in verse 23, in the same chapter, Paul mentions about the new covenant sacrifice, adds it therefore necessary that the pattern of these things in the heavens should be purified. Principle number three, finding favor out of bondage. Can somebody read Genesis 3 verse 21 and another volunteer, Exodus 12 verse 35-36. All right, Genesis chapter 3, verse 21. Mm -hmm. Unto Adam also and to his wife did the Lord God make coats of skins and clothe them. Thank you. And somebody read Exodus 12, verse 35, 36. 35 and 36. Now the children of Israel had done according to the word of Moses, and they had asked for the Egyptians articles of silver, articles of gold, and clothing. And the Lord had given the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians so that they grant them what they had requested. Thus they plundered the Egyptians. Okay, so we see clearly outlined in these verses uh, the purpose of uh, the ornaments during that time. Okay. Now question. It says in the Bible, we are a royal priesthood. Would the principle of wearing ornaments be applicable to us now? Considering the fact that we discussed, we saw earlier in the verse that the priests were wearing the garments after the pattern of the sanctuary, which had also ornaments, okay? Now the answer, we find this in 1 Peter 2, verse 48. Can somebody read that? Sure, it says, first, first Peter 2, it says we, is this already on the screen? Or do I have to go to the scriptures? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, actually, no, it's not on the screen. But um, yeah, First Peter two. Let me read it. Let me read it on um, the scripture then. All right. So it's First Peter two, verse four to eight. Yeah. Oh, okay. First Peter two, verse four to eight. It says, 
to whom coming as unto a living stone, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious. Ye also, as lively stones, are built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Wherefore also it is contained in the scriptures, Behold, I lay in Sion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Until you therefore which believe he is precious, but unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner. And a stone of stumbling, and a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient, where, where unto also they were appointed. Thank you. Now, question. Do we need to offer ornaments into the sanctuary? So, again, the same principle lies in the same uh, verse that you just read. We understand that, our, that Christ, who is our chief cornerstone, our rock, he is the rock, which, which is identically ornaments are made of, from rock. So gold is an iron, for example, is an iron stained rock, okay? So because Christ is our rock, our corner, our corner chief stone, um, that actually sums that up there. And now in Matthew 27, verse 56, I'm sorry, 57 to 60, a rich man named Joseph had wrapped the body of Jesus in fine linen. And the same principle is found with the rich man demonstrated it willingly with his heart. So it was like a form of offering when he chose linen to wrap the body of Jesus like a form of offering as well. He gave willing with his heart. Um, now that we've laid the foundation of the purpose and principles of ornaments, let us look at the counterfeit or perverted use that the Bible clearly outlines. Example number one, Lucifer. We know what that verse uh, outlines in Isaiah 14, verse 12 to 14. Can somebody tell me what happened here? His heart was lifted up because of his beauty. Right. So we understand where the root problem in terms of the perversion of the use of ornaments when God intentionally uh, pr proposed the opposite. Okay. Um, now, he also said he has defiled thy sanctuary. If you look in verse 17 and 18, especially in the same chapter in Ezekiel 28, uh, it is mentioned that he has defiled the sanctuary by the multitude of thy iniquities. So pride was what defiled um, that purpose. And Hezekiah, example number two. Does anybody recall what happened here in the account of Hezekiah? Can somebody read Isaiah 39, verse 1 to 8? I believe that was when um, there were some visitors from Babylon, and, and, he, and he displayed all the, all, mm -hmm. the, all the treasures held in, in the that's in right. sanctuary. Mm -hmm. That's right. So that's another pride issue, okay? He showed off the ornaments. He didn't glorify God. Okay, Number example number three, Jezebel. Anybody can tell me, based on the verses here, can somebody recall what happened here? I believe that was before um, Jehu had her slain, and, and, and she had um, um, put on makeup, or like right before she, she was thrown out of a window and eaten by dogs. Mm -hmm. Right, and then, and then she was devoured by, yeah, that's right. But if you think of Jezebel, which was adorned with makeup and so forth, I think of um, the uh, Re Revelation 17 woman. I think of that too, because I can imagine she was adorned with those things as well, and with jewels. Okay, example number four. What happened here? Does anybody recall what was covered two, three weeks ago when I gave this verse? Uh... This is, um, this is when um, this is the this is the allegory. I don't know if this is a real um thing, but this is when um, God's uh, I guess the women were were had tinkling things and ornaments and different things on them. I believe. Huh? They were, yes, the judgments. These were the judgments of Darz of Zion who are haughty and proud, and they had the tinkling of the feet, the cufflinks, all the list of the jewels you could well the ornaments that you could think of. Uh, God was talking about. I want to really zero in. Let's just actually quickly go there. There's something I want to point out here in particular. Okay, Isaiah chapter 3. I'm just going to go here. Okay, so verse 15, 16. Okay, so 15, 16, here it says, 
what do you mean by crushing my people and grinding the faces of the poor, says the Lord of hosts. Moreover, the Lord says, because the daughters of Zion are haughty and walk with outstretched necks and wanton eyes, walking and mincing as they go, making a jingling with their feet, okay? Therefore, the Lord will strike with a scab, the crown of the head of the daughters of Zion, and the Lord will uncover their secret parts. In that day, the Lord will take away the finery, the jingling anklets, the scarves, and the crescents, the pendants, the bracelets, the, and the veils, the headdresses, the lead, leg ornaments, and the headbands, the perfume boxes, the charms, and the rings, and the nose jewels, the festal apparel, and the mantles, the outer garments, the purses, and the mirrors, the fine linen, remember the fine linen we talked about when Jesus' body was wrapped in fine linen, the turbans, and the robes. And then verse 24, and so it shall be, instead of sweet smell, there shall be a stench, instead of a sash, a robe, instead of well-set hair, baldness, instead of rich robe, girding of sackcloth, and branding instead of beauty. Again, pride was obviously the ultimate motivating factor that led to this fall, because we know in Proverbs it says pride goes before destruction, right? So we understand beauty and holiness and glory of God to be is, is to be restored in the earth made new. Now, example number five, Israel willfully breaks the covenant. Aaron, who was chosen as a priest, whose purpose was to reflect holy priesthood that we covered earlier in this presentation, uh, the priests were to wear after the pattern of the sanctuary, which had ornaments and the colors of the sanctuary, and using of these ornaments to minister an offering into the tabernacle. But because of unbelief, impatience, and pride, used the ornaments and made gods out of it. So th the same things that was meant to glorify God, they used it and made gods out of it, okay? Remember the story with Aaron, who was a priest? We know the story there, right? Okay, question. Is it a sin to wear or adorn ourselves with ornaments? Can somebody read 2 Timothy 3, 16, 17? Another volunteer, James 4, 17. A third volunteer, Proverbs 6, 16, 17. And a fourth volunteer for First Peter three one to five. Second Timothy three sixteen and seventeen. Mm -hmm. It says all scripture is given by inspiration of God. No, that's yeah, okay. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Very good. So we understand that everything that is in the scripture is having inspired for us to reprove, to instruct, and so forth, right? Okay, next. James 4.17, someone else? I got it. Um, it says, therefore, to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. Okay, so that's clear for that one. Proverbs 6, 16, 17, someone else. Okay. Um, there are six things which the Lord hates. Yes, seven which are an abomination to him. Haughty eyes, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood. Okay, and First Peter 3, 1 to 5. I can read that. Uh, First Peter 3, 1 to 5. Verse 1, Likewise, you wives, be in subjection to your husbands, that if any obey not the word, they also may without the word be won by the conversion of the wives, while they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear whose adorning let it not be that outward adorning of plaiting of the hair, of the wearing of gold, or putting on of apparel. But let it be the hidden man of the heart, in that which is not corruptible, even the adornment of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of great price. For after this manner in the old time, the holy women also, who trusted in God, adored themselves being in subjection unto their husbands." Okay, very good. Um, so we understand here the outline that um, was addressed. Uh, of course, it's all about uh, the meekness and quiet and spirit of God, which is found in Christ Jesus, who is our rock. 
the purpose of ornaments will be restored. In Song of Solomon was a song or poem written by Solomon. The whole book is an excellent illustration of the love of Christ to his bride, the church, and his purpose of when he had created Lucifer, whose beauty was decked with ornaments. As you see, it outlined in Song of Solomon, chapter 4, 1 to 14. Then Song of Solomon, chapter 5, verse 8 to 16, the handsomeness of the bridegroom is praised. So uh, the list of ornaments were mentioned in that, those uh, verses was talking about the beauties. That was what I was talking about earlier in this presentation, that the purpose of the ornaments during the time was for the glory and holiness and beauty of God. It was supposed to reflect that, okay? Christ, our high priest, returns arrayed with ornaments. If you look at Revelation chapter 1, verse 9 to 20, let us review verse 13 and 15. Can somebody read 13 and 15 in Revelation 1, please? Revelation verses. chapter 1, verses 13 and 15. Mm -hmm. It reads, verse 13, And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girt about the paps with a golden girdle. Verse 15, And his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. Okay. Now, I'll read, I'll read Malachi 3, verse 2 to 4. It says, But who can endure the day of his coming? And who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire and like laundry soap. He will sit as a refiner and a purifier of silver. He will purify the sons of Levi and purge them as gold and silver. They, that they may offer, remember the word offer, to the Lord an offering in righteousness. Then the offering of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasant to the Lord as in the days of old, as in former years. Okay? Uh, can somebody read Revelation 3, verse 18? It says, um, I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thine eyes with eye salve that thou mayest see. Amen. Isaiah 60 verse 1 says, Arise, shine, for the light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Verse 15 to 22 says, Where, Whereas you have fors forsaken and hated, so that no one went through you, I will make you an eternal excellence, a joy of many generations. You shall drink the milk of the Gentiles and milk the breasts of kings. And you shall know that I, the Lord, I am your Savior and your Redeemer, the Mighty One of God, of Jacob, sorry. Instead of bronze, I will bring gold. Instead of iron, I will bring silver. Instead of wood, bronze. And instead of stones, iron. I will also make your officers peace. Violence shall no longer be heard in your land neither wasting nor destruction within your borders. But you shall call your walls salvation and your gates praise. The sun shall no longer be your light by day, nor for brightness shall the moon give light to you, but the Lord will be to you an everlasting light and your God, your, your glory. Your sun shall no longer go down, nor shall your moon withdraw itself, for the Lord will be your everlasting light and the days of your mourning shall be ended. Verse 21. Also your people shall be all be righteous. They shall inherit the land forever. My, the branch of my planting, the work of my hands, that I may be glorified. A little one shall become a thousand and a small one a strong nation. I, the Lord, will hasten it in its time. Now here's some quotes from the pen of inspiration in regards to this uh, topic. Can somebody read this uh, one, actually? I like participation, so... <laughs> Can somebody read that? It says, um, by the world, the holidays are spent in frivolity and extravagance, gluttony and display. Thousands of dollars will be worse than thrown away upon the coming Chris Christmas and New Year's in needless indulgences. But it is our privilege to depart from the customs and practices of this degenerate age. And instead of expending means merely for the gratification of the appetite or for needless ornaments or articles of clothing, we may 
make the coming holidays an occasion in which to honor and glorify God. Amen. Here's another quote. Self-denial is in dress is a part of Christian du our Christian duty. To dress plainly and abstain from display of jewelry and ornaments of every kind is in keeping with our faith. Are we of the number who see the folly of worldlings in indulging in extravagance of dress as well as in love of amusements? Child Guidance 423.3. Somebody else read that? Child Guidance 434. Okay. Parents frequently dress their children in extravagant garments with, with much display of ornaments, then openly admire the effect of their apparel and compliment them on their appearance. <laughs> These foolish parents would be filled with consternation if they could see how Satan seconds their efforts and urges them on to greater follies. So again, we understand the concept is pride. The time is not far distant when the test will come to every soul. The observance of the false Sabbath will be urged upon us. The contest will be between the commandments of God and the commandments of men. Those who have yielded step by step to worldly demands and conform to worldly customs will then yield to the powers that be, rather than subject themselves to derision, insult, threat, and imprisonment and death. At that time, the gold will be separated from the dross. Many a star that we have admired for its bril brilliance will then go out in darkness. Those who have assumed the ornaments of the sanctuary but are not clothed with Christ's righteousness will then appear in the shame of their own nakedness. This is taken from Prophets and Kings 188. Women can do a good, sorry, women can do good work in the missionary field by writing to friends and learning their true feelings in relation to the cause of God. Very valuable items are brought to light through this means. The worker should not seek for self-exaltation, but to present the truth in its simplicity wherever they shall have an opportunity. The money that has been spent for needless trimmings and useless ornaments should be devoted to the cause of God and used to bring the light of truth to those who are in darkness of error. The souls saved through their efforts will be more precious to them than costly and fashionable dress. The white robes and jeweled crown given them by Christ as the reward of their unselfish efforts in the salvation of souls will be more valuable than needless adornments. The stars in the crowns will be shined forever and ever and will a thousand times repay them for a self the self-denial and self-sacrifice they have exercised in the cause of God. In deep sadness, the people buried their dead. Three thousand and fall, had fallen by the sword. A plague had soon after broken out in the encampment. And now the message came to them that the divine presence would no longer accompany them in their journeys. I will not go up in the midst of thee, for thou art a stiff-necked people, lest I consume thee in the way. And the command was given, put off thy ornaments from thee, that I may know what to do unto thee. In penitence and humiliation, the children of Israel stripped themselves of their ornaments by Mount Horeb. Can somebody read this one? I'll read it. Many who profess to be Christians spend so much on dress that they have nothing to spare for the needs of others. Costly ornaments and expensive clothing they think they must have, regardless of the needs of those who can with difficulty provide themselves with even the plainest clothing. So again, we see it's pride, selfishness. That, that uh, is a huge reason behind why uh, we need not to focus on wearing these things. But God had an original plan for ornaments in the get-go. Can somebody read this one, please? Beauty of the soul, uh, a standing rebuke. In the third chapter of Isaiah's prophecy mention is made of the prevailing pride of the daughters of Zion with their tinkling ornaments, the chain and the braces and the, muffle, the mufflers and bonnets. 
um, and the headbands and the tablets and the earrings, the rings, the nose shoes, the changeable suits of papero and the mantlet, mantles and the wimples and the crisping pins, the glasses and the fine linen and the hoods and the veils. How differed this picture from that portrayed by the apostle Peter of the God fearing woman who estimating at is real value, the outward adorn of plating the hair and of wearing of gold and of putting on apparel. Those chooses rather to cultivate beauty of soul, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of great price. It was after this manner in the old time that the holy woman who trusted in God adorned themselves and their chaste conversation coupled with fear as revealed in daily life was ever a standing rebuke to the to their sisters who followed after folly amen so may god bless you as you continue to seek him brothers and sisters for answers in his word and in his testimonies so that ends my presentation um i mentioned to randy earlier that I can go only up to 4.30, max. Um, you could take off the recording as well, it's no problem, for any questions that you may have. Actually, no, 3.38, we could actually go till 4, because I'm actually at a, over at some friends, and I want to be mindful of, of their presence as well. Um, so yes, I, I can open the floor for if there's any questions and so forth. Was everything clear, or? Uh, I have a question. Yes. Um, on one of your slides, you asked, is it a sin to wear jewelry? Mm -hmm. But you didn't clearly say whether it was or not. Uh, actually, I did, based on the verses that I shared earlier. Um, because it, we read earlier that, you know, the inner adorning of man, this should be our focus right now. And based on the testimonies I shared with you, speaks for itself where it talks about um, where we should more have our focus uh, for the salvation of souls, uh, the seeking of being simple, but yet tasteful in dress. We should be tasteful. Don't get me wrong. We should not be extremists because she does give quotes on that as well. Uh, we should be tasteful, durable clothing, healthful clothing, but our main focus uh, is not to, because that's where Lucifer fell and God does want to preserve his people uh, because he sees, he knows that because we smudge, that um, he wants to preserve us in his likeness so that when, when he returns, we shall be wearing ornaments. So yes, I would say, based on what we read earlier, that it would be a sin. Because the verse we read earlier, too, in terms of to him who knows and does, it's a sin, right? So if we know better, we do better. I don't know if that makes sense. Yes, yes, that makes sense to me. Camille, did you have a question? Camille didn't have a question. Okay. Yes, yeah, so I also had failed to mention in the presentation on ornaments or jewelry is that um, the priests were removing the ornaments during the Day of Atonement. So because now we live in the anti-typical Day of Atonement, there's no need for us as we are a royal priesthood, according to the scriptures, to wear these things. So, just want to add that. And um, to those who may be watching uh, this presentation, uh, and you're viewing this for the first time, uh, not to feel condemned. Uh, the most important thing is to seek Christ, and He Himself will convict you to discard of these things. Let this not be a presentation to condemn because Christ did not come to condemn but to save so may God bless as we seek in love purity and simplicity to reflect him so that he will crown us with crowns uh, full of precious jewels because our treasure is not of this earth but of heaven God bless bye for now right with God His pardon is free Get right with God He's waiting for thee Our Jesus is calling Oh come unto me Take Him O 
Sim.